Welcome to my page. Today I'm going to be talking about my pantry essentials. Growing up in a Jamaican household, I learned from an early age that spices are the variety of life. <laughs> so my essentials are vast and very varied. Let's get to it. So first I'll be showing you my all round sort of spices that I use quite often. So these are my spices that go in my everyday dinners and lunches. I use this granulated garlic, uh, get this massive one, it's 510 grams. This usually lasts us probably about three months. We usually get this from Costco. Um, it's huge, but it's only, I think about three pounds. So it's well worth it. I use this Schwartz chicken seasoning. Oh, this is one of the best seasonings I think I've ever had. Um, I don't just use it for chicken. I use it on uh, anything really. So I've put a little bit on fish before, which was great. Um, I recently gave up red meat, but before that I used to put this on pork and also I used to put this on beef as well. It's just a really nice blend of different herbs and spices. So this is great to have. My husband likes black and Cajun. I'm not a huge fan at all. That's why I barely use this one. Um, but he usually puts this on salmon that he has for lunches. Again, it's quite a versatile seasoning, but it is very nice. Again, we got this from Costco. So we've got some turmeric here. I love turmeric. It's got many health benefits. Um, I usually put this in rice, which goes very nicely, usually with sort of Indian inspired meals. I've got some cumin seeds here. Uh, they've got quite a pungent flavour, but I usually use these with a little bit of onion uh, that I sweat down with garlic and I put the cumin seeds in and then I put in some rice and that is really nice just as a little side. We've got some onion salt. I don't use this very often. Um, I try not to cook with very much salt at all, but some recipes do sort of ask for a bit of onion salt. So that's why I've got this. It is very nice, but again, it's quite a, a salty flavor. So you don't need to have any other salt if you use this. We've got some ground coriander here. I actually prefer fresh, but ground coriander again goes well with um, Indian inspired dishes. We've got some cardamom pods. Again, this usually goes with Indian. We've got hot paprika here. Fennel seeds, again, uh, like with the other, with the cumin seeds, I use fennel seeds with swept down onions and garlic and I put rice with that as well. So that just gives it a completely different flavour. We've got some garam masala here. Uh, let me just show you my other Indian spices as well. So I've got garam masala. And then I've got these Natco seasonings. Uh, I've got a Madras curry powder, which I haven't yet used, um, but this goes very nicely with curries. And I've got ground cumin, as you can see, I've used this a lot, so it's actually rubbed off, but ground cumin. I've got chilli powder. This one um, is quite a mild flavour. I think if you use a bit, you know, use more of it, it gets stronger, but you don't need a lot of it, which is great. And I've got whole cloves here. Uh, I don't think I've made many curries without whole cloves. Again, you can see that it's rubbed off, so I've used this quite often. So those are mo most of my Indian-inspired spices. Uh, can't make a curry without these, curry or rice, or any meat dish, really. I've got ground ginger here. This is very versatile. You can use this in Indian food, in Chinese food. You can use it in baking. Uh, ground ginger makes for a lovely uh, ginger loaf and also ginger biscuits, which are amazing. A 
I've got some powdered mustard here. I'm not a huge mustard fan, but we do use this for certain dishes. I make a honey and mustard chicken, which is very nice. Uh, I use a little bit of this mustard powder and I also use the um, multigrain mustard as well, which is very, very nice. Some more Schwartz seasonings. I uh, recently found this one and also this New York Buffalo one. I found these in Asda and gave these a go. I've used both of them on salmon and they are both really, really nice, very flavoursome. You sort of a little bit goes a long way, so you don't need to use a whole host of it, but it goes so nicely. I need to try this with some chicken as well. I think it goes nicely with chicken. And um, also I could put it on some wedges or some chips if I make homemade chips or wedges that would quite go quite nicely actually. I finished my paprika recently and I thought I had another one but I don't but paprika I use in quite a lot of dishes. Uh, I really love paprika. I've got ground white pepper. I don't use this in a lot. I only really use this when I make egg fried rice. Um, but this gives it just a quite a punchy flavour. It's very nice. You only need to use a little bit of it. So I've got some Schwartz roast chicken seasoning. This is very nice. Uh, I do find it a little bit salty, so I only use a little bit of it on chicken, but it is very nice. got some Chinese fire spice and some Thai seven spice. Uh, these are used a lot in Thai and also in Chinese dishes. They're very nice. So I've got some all-purpose seasoning here. Um, this is used in many Caribbean dishes. It's just a, a all-round seasoning that you put as a bit of a base. So to go with the hot paprika, I've also got smoked paprika, which has an extremely potent flavour. You really only need a small amount of this. If you put too much, it can ruin your whole dish and sort of overpower everything. Uh, it's a very, very smoky flavour. It's got quite a rich depth to it and it adds a real nice taste to your meals. Uh, but as I said, only a small amount is needed. You can use this in paellas, usually mainly sort of Spanish dishes. It is great and I really like this brand. It is probably one of the best that I've had. I have a small range of herbs that I use. I do prefer to use fresh herbs in dishes, but sometimes they are called for dry in some recipes. So I've got oregano. I really like to use this in pizzas and I also put this in a lot of pastas and a lot of chicken dishes as well. I've got bay leaves. I use bay leaves quite a lot in stews. I've got rosemary here. I'm not a massive fan of rosemary but it does go nicely with roast potatoes. I usually put a little bit of garlic clove in there as well um, and some rock salt as well that goes really nicely with roast potatoes. I've got mixed herbs. I like the mixed herbs in pastas. I think with a tomato based pasta I usually use the mixed herbs. That gives it sort of a, a range of flavour. I've got chives, dried chives. I use this in a lot of Asian inspired dishes, the dried chives. I use fresh chives on pasta dishes and cold salads. I've got sage that when we used to eat red meat that would go so nicely with pork, but now I use the sage in certain rice dishes and also with chicken. I've got some basil here. Uh, again, I don't really use dried basil very often at all. I usually just use the fresh basil, but it's always good to have some dry just in case. 
and lastly I've got some tarragon that goes very nicely with chicken uh, there's a tarragon sauce that you can make to go with chicken and that is really really tasty onto my salt and peppers I've got this Cornish salt this is rock salt and I use this for boiling water when I'm making pasta or I put this when I'm boiling some rice as well this is a bit too pungent for putting sort of on top of your dishes so on salads and things it's just got too much of a strong flavour so I've got this Himalayan pink salt this is what I use on top of salads and on sort of pasta dishes cold pasta dishes if I've had to run the pasta under cold water then I use this pink Himalayan salt it's a much milder flavour and also it's got health benefits to it so I usually use this on my dishes so I don't cook it out and I've got this sea salt fine so this one I usually use in dishes so if I have a chicken dish or a meat dish that I need to cook uh, and it calls for salt then I'll put this in there um, again it's not as strong as the rock salt because um, this is fine so you don't use as much so I just use this in meat dishes I've got my black pepper here so this cracked black pepper I just use in everything really so if I've got a pasta dish rice dish I put it on salads as well I just love cracked black pepper and as you saw previously in the video the ground white pepper I usually use in my egg rice and that's about it really so on to my Asian inspired pantry essentials I've got dark soy sauce, I've got two different types of dark soy sauce. This one is slightly thicker than this one, so when a dish needs to be quite rich in flavour I'll use this one and when not so much I'll use this one. I've got this light soy sauce. I usually use this one to put at the end of a dish uh, just to give it just a slightly more salty flavour, just a little bit more of a depth of flavour. I've got this mushroom stir fry sauce. I'm allergic to shellfish, so I have a friend who's Thai and she actually advised me that mushroom sauce is what she uses she's a vegetarian so she uses this mushroom sauce instead of oyster sauce in recipes that call for it so she said that this is a great substitute so i got some of this and i have to say it is very very nice so i don't feel like i'm missing out on anything i just use this instead of oyster sauce i've got shaoxing rice wine which is used in a lot of chinese dishes And sesame oil absolutely love sesame oil it just gives such a nice flavor at the end of a dish uh, if you put this in at the end of the dish if you put it in whilst your dish is still cooking it will cook out most of the flavor so you just need to put a little bit of this at the end it is very strong so only a little bit is needed but it just gives it a lovely sesame flavor and I use this fish sauce it doesn't actually use any shellfish so it's safe for me to have this which is great so this gives a very pungent flavour again you don't need a lot of this a lot of these sauces and vinegars you don't need a lot they are very strong in flavour so less is more I use this coconut milk this is my favourite coconut milk, I get this from Wing Yip, which is a Asian supermarket. This is probably the best coconut milk I've ever had. It's really creamy and it's got such a strong coconut flavour. It's really, really nice. So if you see this around, I highly recommend getting a couple of tins. I use this palm sugar. This is very nice. I usually use this in 
uh, Thai dishes and it is great it goes really nicely with chili peppers so it sort of takes away from the really intense heat and gives it just a slight sweet flavour Uh, this is my favourite hoisin sauce. It's so rich. It goes so nicely just as a dipping sauce. You can also put it in your dishes as well. But I use it mainly for spring rolls as a dipping sauce. It's just great. I could literally eat this with a teaspoon. So this rendang paste is very, very nice with chicken. Uh, I've also made it with tofu. I'm not a massive tofu fan, so it ruined the dish for me, to be honest. <laughs> but I usually make chicken with this, uh, chicken thighs, and it is a very, very nice paste. I usually put a little bit of coconut milk in it as well, just to make a sort of sauce base. But you don't have to put the coconut milk if you're not a fan. This is really nice, just on its own with some onions, garlic added to your dish. It's really, really nice. Again, I got this from Winyip. So if you have a Asian supermarket near you, they probably will have this paste. There are another couple of pastes as well, but unfortunately, because of my shellfish allergy, I can't try them. But my husband has said that they are very nice. So if you see any of the other range from this make, I can recommend this one and my husband can recommend the others in the range. So I only have a few different vinegars, I don't have quite a wide range of these, but the ones that I do have I use in a lot. So we've got the original malt vinegar, which I absolutely love. A little trick I learned from a school friend's mum was to put a little bit of vinegar in tuna sweet corn and it just really enhances the flavour. I'm not sure what it is, but it really does make it just that much better. We've got distilled malt vinegar. This I use a lot for pickling. So when I want to do uh, pickled garlic or make gherkins or just pickled onions, I'll use this. Got some white wine vinegar. I got this one from Wingyip. Really, really like this white wine vinegar. And here we've got some red wine vinegar. This one I usually make uh, with for pickled onions. Uh, not your normal pickled onions, but the sliced up red onions or really thinly sliced white onions. And I put some of this vinegar and some juniper berries and leave that for a little while and it just makes a really nice crunchy onion. And lastly, we've got balsamic vinegar. This vinegar is very nice, but it is actually quite, has quite a bitter taste. So I usually make a basil, tomato, garlic and red onion salad, and I'll put balsamic vinegar on it and leave it for a few hours at least in the fridge, just for it to all come together. But with this make, I found that it makes it quite bitter. It's still got the lovely rich taste, but I have to sprinkle just a little bit of brown sugar or caster sugar over the salad and let that dissolve into it and it brings it all together nicely. But this is a nice vinegar for salads on its own. But if you want to make the tomato, basil, garlic and onion, I suggest sprinkling in a little bit of sugar just to cut the tartness. So I cook with rapeseed oil. I really like this range. It's cold pressed and I find it doesn't have a flavour at all. So I really like this. This is what I cook with every day. So I've got this sunflower oil spray. So when I'm making homemade chips or wedges or when I'm baking a cake, I will spray some of this over the wedges or chips and that makes it really crispy. Or when I'm baking, I'll spray the tin with this because it doesn't leave a flavour and using oil doesn't let the edges of the cakes burn when you put them in the oven. So this is what this spray is for. I don't use this for cooking meals. 
So I've got some extra virgin olive oil. This is what I'll put on salads or in certain usually Italian dishes or Spanish dishes that ask for extra virgin olive oil. It's got a slight scent to it, which I think gives a little flavour to dishes. So that's why I don't cook with this every day. It's also got a higher burning point as well. So your pots will start to steam really quickly if you use the extra virgin olive oil you'll get a really smoky kitchen and lastly i've got chili infused rapeseed oil this is really really nice it's just as it says got a chili flavor to it it's infused with the chili so it's spicy and i use this on salads because if you cook cook this down the chili taste usually goes so i just put this on salads or pastas or anything that i want to have just a little bit of heat to uh, that calls for a bit of oil so we've got stocks and sauces here this is my favorite stock i use this in pretty much every dish that i make uh, it's the nor chicken stock granules they're 25 percent less salt and this just gives every dish that I have just a real depth of flavour. I don't know what it is, but I just love this stock. I can't think of any main dinner dish that I make that I don't put this in. So I have these two chicken stocks that I also use. Uh, this is a chicken stock pot and this one are the cubes. I will usually put one of each of these when I make a soup. Uh, they're really, really rich. These especially, you don't need any more than one of these for a dish that will sort of serve about four people. Uh, so when I make my soups, I make quite a lot. So I batch cook and you really only need one of each of these. This is a very intense flavour. So you don't need any more than one of these. And this sort of just tops off the flavour a little bit. So I use these two. I also crumble this one in if I want to do a seasoned rice. I will crumble this in when the rice is cooking and that makes it just really nice and flavoursome with some onions and garlic and any herbs if I want to put herbs in there as well. And the same with the vegetables. So I've got the vegetable stock pots and the vegetable cubes. So if I'm making a vegetable soup, I'll use one of each again. These are very potent, so you only need the one. And this is just a little top off to that flavour. But they are very, very nice. Uh, just the vegetable version to the chicken. Uh, Nor also have a huge range of these. They've got uh, lamb ones, they've got beef. The rich beef one is very, very nice if you want a really, really decadent flavour into your sauces. The rich beef one is very, very nice. I do miss that. Um, but all of the range, if you see any different ones, I think they've got lamb, pork, beef. Uh, and they've I've seen the fish stock cubes i haven't seen the stock pots so let me know if you have seen the fish stock pots that would be great so coleman's have a range of these sauces they're dry packet sauces that you then mix with milk and they will make whichever one you choose so this white sauce i make a turkey lasagna or a vegetable lasagna and i use this white sauce as the white sauce for that and also the cheddar cheese sauce. They've got a four cheese sauce that I usually get, but they didn't have any um, when I did my last shop. So I got this cheddar cheese sauce. It's very nice for pasta dishes. It doesn't just make macaroni cheese. If you want a vegetable pasta and you put this over the top, it makes a really rich sauce. It's very creamy. I usually make mine with oat milk. And so that makes it just even richer. Um, I think it'd be very nice with any milk though. It has a lot of flavour. You don't need to add very much more to this, to your dish, to give it sort of an intense flavour. It is very, very nice. I haven't tried any of the other range of these. Let me know in the comments if you have, but I really, really like these. And lastly, I've got this wild mushroom sauce. I haven't tried this one yet, but I am really, really looking forward to it. I love anything mushroom, so I'm hoping that this wild mushroom sauce has a good flavour to it. Let me know if you tried this one or what you tried it with. Now on to my miscellaneous. 
these are my odds and ends that I have in my pantry but I wasn't really sure which range to put them in so here they are so we've got this Scotch Bonnet pepper sauce it's really really nice it's got a really great flavour it is quite hot but it's got a flavour to it so it's not just intense heat there are sort of background flavours to this it's very nice I didn't buy this my dad bought this back from Jamaica I'm not sure if you can get it in the UK let me know if you can and where you can find it because I will definitely buy more of these but they are very very nice so if you see them and you like a spicy flavour then I'd get this this is the Duns River hot sauce this is very nice I put this with rice it's not as spicy as the previous one so if you like a bit of heat but not much heat a couple of drops of this will do nicely in your dish again this isn't just heat it has got a background flavor to it as well so you don't just have your head blown off it does give your dish an enhanced taste And I think most people know about sriracha. Sriracha is great. Um, it's got its own unique flavour. I haven't tasted anything else that tastes like a sriracha sauce, but I love this stuff. So you've got tomato puree. That's the base of many Italian dish or any tomato dish, really. Tomato puree just gives it a really nice flavour. Um, this is the Sainsbury's one. This is very nice. It's probably one of the best that I've tried. I love this garlic puree. I use garlic granules more, most often and also raw garlic, but this garlic puree is really nice. I usually put this with um, a bolognese when I used to eat red meat. Um, I'd put this with that. Now, I usually just put this with a vegetable dish. It just gives a really nice garlicky taste. The infamous Worcestershire sauce. No one knows how to say it. I've got no idea. Let me know if you know. But this is great. The Liam Perrins is probably the best known one. And it's the one that I like the most. I got this in Costco. Um, this was this lasts for a really long time you don't need a lot of this but it's a nice base flavor i've got honey i love honey it's very versatile you can put it in teas people have it on toast i've never tried it on toast but you know i can imagine it's very very nice i usually put this in a dish if i want a little bit of sweetness but don't want to add sugar i'll use honey I've got creamed coconut here. Uh, I use this when I make uh, rice and peas. The, you know, that's the base flavour that I think everyone uses in their rice and peas is creamed coconut. You can also put this in curries. If you don't have any coconut milk, you can use this instead as well. It's creamed coconut, so that goes nicely. It's a nice alternative if you can't find any coconut milk. It's good to have because it lasts a long time. If you haven't opened it, it lasts a really long time. So it's good to have in your pantry as a backup. Now I have this tahini. This tahini is the best I've ever had. It really, really is. I make my own hummus. So it's really nice to have this tahini. I make my hummus with garlic and lemon and this, this sauce and it's just amazing. It gives such a flavour. Again, you don't need to use a lot uh, because it is, you know, the crushed sesame seeds. So that in itself has a really strong flavour. But this is the best make I've had. I've had sort of supermarket own brand and it's not as strong. The depth of flavour isn't the same. So if you see this again and you want to make your own hummus or you want to do a tahini sauce, you know, this is one to get, one to look out for. So if you see it, get one. So that's the end of my pantry essentials. Thank you so much for watching. I think next I may do a couple of recipes, uh, but we'll see. Let me know if there's anything that you would like to see. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe.